Hi, pretty Hi, people. Friends. Yeah, we could hear you coughing during that intro there, John. I thought I was on mute. No, you can't no. mute the mic. Oh. You gotta mute it on the stream yard. It's okay, we're learning things. Good morning, everyone. Or mid-afternoon. <laughs> hey, guys. Oh, my gosh. I'm so agitated now. I really thought I was on mute there. No, you're fine. But I'm really loving the way your shirt matched the back matches our background. And I did. we didn't even discuss that. Well, you know, we're, we're so like sonically In connected. Line. Yeah. Um, I do want to start. Oh, okay. So hi guys, everyone. Hi. It is the weekly roundup, baby. I'm John. And I am Amanada. And we're really glad to see you guys every Monday at 3.30 PM on our YouTube, um, youtube.com slash at pod in the city. Now, I do want to start off by saying we also have a Sex and the City podcast where this week we're talking about um and just like that. Um and this episode bugged me and bored me to death. Oh yeah. Um, I feel like it's it been so was... long since we recorded it, but you're pretty. And it was filler. It was a filler episode, but don't worry. Don't worry. This week we got Jody who's Oh yeah. podcasting 5 days in a row. I forced her to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jody. But she's coming on for the the classic uh, kitchen, kitchen scene. Ring. We'll just say, yeah. Well, John said it. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Very well. <laughs> the lead. There. That's what happens. If there's finger banging, I think. Anyway, um, we also now, friends. I am really hoping that at least within this live broadcast, we could get one person to join our Patreon. <laughs> Come yeah. on, y'all. In our one live podcast, just one person. Come on and join that Whatever. Patreon. And this is actually the perfect time to do it because this Saturday we have a special event. It really is. If you aren't hooked up for the um, 420 uh, special, uh, it'll be across our um, Patreon on the We Love to Hate TV Patreon, the Surre Surreality TV Patreon, right? And... I wasn't listening to anything you were saying in the <laughs> comments, but yeah, all of those sounded like podcasts that will be there. Yeah, good vanilla, best supporting pod, me and Jody's podcast, love to hate TV and TRP. Um, and Justine will be in the comments uh, the whole time, kind of um, manning that whole situation because we don't know you how many guys, people are going to show up to this. It's this Saturday, so please join. And right now, right now, if you're look, if you look down and it does not say that you're subscribed, if it just says subscribe, click it right freaking now and we only need like 50 more and then we can start like doing we really do or whatever. but it, it's feeling like those last ones are a little yeah, it's, we're, it's we're chugging along there towards the it's, end um y'all help us help us out babies um, can i address um well say we got please. that on our very first couple of weeks of lives all everything we just said would have taken us 25 minutes and we're under it four would. minutes here, baby. We're, um, I mean, we're I, like, I, I'm feeling more like, you know, we're getting like a talk show, you know? Yeah, like, I still feel like I'm going to poop my pants all Monday, every Monday, all the way think? leading up to it. Yeah, and then when I walk into the office to sit down, it's like, dun, dun, <laughs> no. dun. Like I'm walking to my death. But I want to, you didn't, Um, I thought the first thing that you'd mention is how great my setup was. Now, John was really excited about it over text. First, I printed off these pictures. Am I Amanda's gonna like kill me this weekend of texting. I print like... out these pictures to Womp. I was so excited. These are like I got I got like express printing. I sent them to John. He writes, "Wow." I was like, "Excuse okay. me." It was a wow with like six W's on it. Like, okay, wow. Came across as a little condescending. Like, <laughs> wow. Wow. I guess you're on Littaby's side. I guess you're on Littaby's side. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Got it. You remember <laughs> the name. It's all well, um, of, are we? Is this housekeeping? Because I got no, some housekeeping. I still, I'm with still this describing. Show. There's so much more to describe about my office. <laughs> Ask him over. First of all, this bookshelf I've had since 2012 when I lived with Nick Kachanov. Wow. This made it through like 25 moves, including across the country. The only reason bookshelves can talk. Right? I, mean, it's a, I mean, I guess if I. <laughs> 
touch that thing, it will fall over. It is hanging by a thread. But everything on here is relevant. Those two candles up there, Abby and Alana from Broad City. Candle down there, um, Leslie Nope. These are all things Jody gave me. I that love thing it. in the little frame on top there, there. That's my mm -hmm. Amanada thing from Aurora. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then those three pictures up there, all cards that I've received from Jean and Justine, all sister wise. So if anyone ever needs to give me a card again, I will only be accepting these versions of these horribly drawn sister wives paintings. And I'll just add them to the wall. And yeah, it's it's a little a little wobbly. <laughs> um, but um, and then I, I my mom came over and she helped me set everything up and. I mean, that was a whole comedy of errors. I'm like, mom, you need to look into the monitor. And she's like, I like the pod in this city here. And then we can put this one here. And I'm like, yeah, but she's like, it looks better higher. I'm like, you need to look into the monitor. And it needs to be <laughs> she like was not oh, getting it. And sure. it was her ADD yeah. was or her OCD was so upsetting because all of these pictures are a little lower than you would normally hang them. But I'm uh -huh. like, and she's like, well, it's just, it's not aesthetically pleasing. I'm like, but you need to look into the monitor where my head is. It's but a whole setup. It's a whole thing. But this looks so much better. And I made sure that you can still see little poopy pants mm -hmm. down there. Walter, say hello. Look at this. I would love to see Walter. I'd love for you to get like an elevated thing for Walter. <gasps> That's a perfect idea, Joan. I'm going to mm -hmm. add it to my Amazon list. But yes. I got to get, and I, I look thinner this way too, but you got to get Ooh. the, uh, you got to get the sister wives in there. So anyway, I hope you all like it. I'm so professional now. I love it. Now, a part of why John I was wait to get out of that struggling to, well, no, no, I'm staying in it. I'm staying in it. Okay. Uh, I, the reason I struggled to respond was I was at my cabin this weekend mm -hmm. And um, I didn't have my computer with me and I just was like chilling and playing mm -hmm. games and going on walks. And I just was not really like, you know, um, connected. Amanda also told me to send her photos of my cat. And, you know, oh, that, right. was a you whole, didn't. that was really hard to do. That was really hard to do. Well, if anyone wants an update on Saturday, once I got all this to together, um, I sent John a picture of the room and this was his response. If you want to see. Oh, wait, hang on. Was there a response? Uh, yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> Again, sorry. It's... Wow. Same response. Is it? Yes. I think you copied and pasted your earlier, <laughs> earlier, earlier. I think it's just in my, like, common, um, commonly used words. I yeah. think, for me, like, I think it looks great. You'd be super excited. Our logo's there. I think it looks fabulous. Thanks, John. Fabulous. Fabulous. That's our that's our that's our video tier on our Patreon. If you want to yes, check it out, please join it. Um, What's going on are, with you, Joan? Um, I went up to our cabin. Um, yep. It was really nice um, and just like peaceful. Um, and uh, yeah, I picture you just with like one of those like shitty like fisherman hats with a stick, and you're just kind of like poking at stuff as you walk. Mm. Like, uh, and chewing, like, and, on a piece of... I was going to say, maybe smoking. Well. Legal things. All legal. Well, yeah. It's I legal. mean, taking walks, sitting on the porch. You know, Sitting on like a stump that. and just contemplating life. Listening to the, to like, the, the, the birds. Mm, more like looking at TikToks. Uh, and, then, and then and then Amanda sending you a picture of our my fabulous room and then you're pushing it up really quickly just um yeah I'm like I'm trying to relax right now this is stressing <laughs> me out yeah <laughs> oh god can I can I um okay so uh, uh I'll get into this in a second but Ian... I guess this is kind of housekeeping I um Yay. I went to uh, the Rocky Horror Show with Justine Ooh, and my uh -huh. dad. You know how we have our little like triple mm -hmm. date nights, except it's really just my dad going to hang out with Justine. Was he, this the he, same theater? Okay, so no. This was at okay. the Pump House Theater, which is the theater that I kind of grew up uh, doing like all all theater. And but the one that we've been going to is called Beddington and it's, it's, it's newer. Like Pump mm -hmm. House has been there since like the 1900s, like the 1800s. Uh -huh. So <clears throat> this is the first time Justine has been there. And the whole time we were just like, Beddington would never do this. And oh, it was yeah. just like, it was just so much worse. Beddington would have, Beddington would have had a higher 50-50. And uh, they didn't have water. And we're like, Beddington would have had water. There was no toilet paper in the bathroom. A higher 50-50. Like the 50-50 tickets, like. 
Oh, they do like a 50-50 raffle thing? Yeah, they also do. This is something that I'm learning in, now living in Calgary, that before every production and movie, there's an announcement announcing, which I think is fine, like it's good, that they're announcing like, let's remind us all that we're on Indigenous land. Uh, but so, but instead of this Rocky Horror, some girl came out who was indigenous and she sang a, I want to say 45 minute, uh, song in like the okay. native language, which was good, mm -hmm. but it really went on and on. And like at a certain well, point, and was, like, just, just burst out laughing. Kind of like before Rocky Horror. <laughs> right. But, um, anyway. Okay. My... So with the Rocky Horror, was there audience response? Was there a lot of that? Oh. Oh was there oh okay this was like okay. that and justine knows all of these things mm -hmm. this is her well, favorite you were saying that, so, she's yeah. performed the whole thing for me at my house before so she was ready i mean this was bust it was really bad this was one of the worst shows this, it wasn't even fun bad how was it, frank frank inverter it was okay the best this is gonna blow your mind the best performer in the show which this person is usually famously always kind of the least talented person in the cast because they have to be aesthetically perfect but the rocky was so good. I love Hot it. Give and me, great. Oh, baby. Give me a Rocky. Justine uh, was super horned up for this Rocky. I she found him on Instagram. Rockies. We think he does drag. Um, but anyway, oh, it was just like, my dad was my dad kept being like, I'm so sorry, Justine. I'm so sorry, Justine. Of course, he doesn't hug me, talk to me the whole time. He's, <laughs> he's never Justine. Um, it was the call and response was chaotic. I think I've seen Rocky, I think six or seven times now, still can't tell you what's going on, especially in that second act. It was chaos. Plus with all of the audience response, they had a thing, a screen that you could like know what to say. But then some people in the audience were way more advanced and knew like other versions of yeah. what you're supposed to call back. So, and then I was a little bit stoned. So it was just a what? lot going on, a lot going on. Water yeah. guns, I was getting sprayed with my water guns. I had my hair like this and I was just like holding my two little like tendrils like this. <laughs> okay, enough. Uh, the girl next to my dad was wasted and was like screaming and my dad was so miserable. Well, anyway, it was really bad. I had, that was my, my similar Rocky Horror experience once was like, there was a couple people in the audience that were very, very into it and knew yeah. like, knew too much stuff to where it's almost like, okay, sweetie, I don't need you to talk every moment of this <laughs> yeah. thing. Like, let me watch the show too. Like, there's a show happening. The still. Brad's underwear was like a diaper. And at one point no. his wife fell out and he had to like get it back in, <laughs> in his like dumpy ass. Like his underwear was like about to fall off the whole time. And then he had one song in the second act and like afterward, <laughs> and he, You'd think that if you're wearing underwear as like I feel like if you were just wearing underwear on stage, like tidy whities mm -hmm. that are way too big on you, wouldn't you put on like a dance belt or something? Like you'd want some other extra layer of protection, right? Yeah, you're supposed to. Well, he didn't. And after his song, I would turn to Justine and I'm like, I was staring at the tip of that guy's head the entire time. And she's like, Oh, me too. <laughs> it was just like speaking to me the whole Sexy. freaking time. Yeah, the oh Justine is talking here. Yeah, um, the Janet was the yeah Janet was. Well, I don't want to say anything too disparaging about this company, but it was bad. And our next show is something rotten, and it's at Beddington, so they're gonna um, have toilet paper and really good mocktails, and we're excited. I have a question for you. In yeah. our housekeeping, you have Joan on NBC. What is? Oh that? yeah, that was me. I meant to say that last week. You guys, I made collections on me and Jody's Patreon, Love to Hate TV. And if you want to check, it's way easier to like see where everything is. It's still kind of a shit show. But um, Marriage Boot Camp, I've been releasing those on the main feed and I sorted them into collections. And there's one, the one that I just released last week, uh, you were on it. Do you like remember doing that at all? And I Was think it about one Amber and Matt? Amber and Matt were there and it's one okay. where jo we, we spent a good deal of time. Jody took this audio of Tanya saying something oh, okay. and like we kept and like still to this day, we play that like every and week and people, <laughs> we get different responses. Okay. This time I heard this. It's, we're not, we're never going to get, we're going to. Uh oh! Don't touch it's, that mic, Amanda. No, Don't touch no, that mic. Got all this bougie shit now, and <laughs> mic is here. And like, if I touch it, it turns off. If you used to, uh, if you had Tanya listen to herself say that clip, she wouldn't know what was going on. Anyway, I don't I just, think Tanya remembers what's going, what happened <laughs> two hours ago. Anyway, I think you guys should tune in for, I believe it was our Patreon episode. Again, sign up for the Patreon because you'll get to hear about a story about when I. 
sang on stage. Yeah, with Patty I'm gonna, LaBelle. I'm gonna show it next week on our live, but I want everyone to hear the story first this week. And that one's actually not on our Patreon, is it? I, I think that remember. was on the end. Just uh, maybe the end, just like that was so boring. Or that, it was on the um, ASMR. We did three that day. Um, <sighs> but really quickly, anyone who yeah. lives in Calgary, my dad is playing rehearsal piano for this show, and he gave me an entire poster and was like, "Please show this on your podcast." So if anyone's He's down. helping them rehearse, but he won't, if you he's, go to see the performances, he won't be playing, right? He said he might, he said he, he has a feeling he might have to step in, which Ooh, I'm like, what does that mean? That's but, why he gave you the poster, because he thinks he's going to get, case. he's well, going to get. If you're in Calgary between on, on April baby. 26th to May 4th at the Pump House Theater, hopefully they'll have water and toilet paper, um, no. come check out The Gondoliers by Gilbert and Sullivan, no. presented no. by Morpheus Theater. Yeah. The Gondoliers? <laughs> It's a pretty gay show. Ooh. It's, I mean, Gilbert. Is there like dick sucking in it? <laughs> uh, yeah, they wrote that into the and and it's uh, it's like really good rhymes throughout. They're like, I will <laughs> suck the a dick giant sucking. dick. Alrighty, cool, <laughs> yay, yay. Okay, getting rid of that. I just I told my dad I do it, and there it is done. Someone write someone in the comments. Tell us what is different about our Hot Topics introduction. Um, we used so to be able to take, we used to be able to like take a hit really quick during that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I would never. All right. So top story, I guess, is the return of Jojo Siwa. I got to give it to her at the top here. Now, Jojo, as we spoke about last week, has been going through a rebrand. Now, I did see on TikTok yesterday that she performed at like Miami Pride or something, and she was still wearing like a rainbow outfit, like her old oh, school. Oh, okay, I haven't seen outfit. that. And I'm like, and people in the com, people on TikTok are like, um, is the rebrand in the room with us right now? Because that's like you know one of the things people put on. That. So, um, because it's like I thought you were going dark, girl. I did think it was very funny if you look at our cover. Jojo and um, Tim and Curry Rocky, literally or, like, uh, Frank and look, Frank, yeah. they're like almost doing the same. Also, John, pose. same it's level crazy. of talent. Also, it's it's her standing next to like an actual kind of gay icon and then her being like, I'm in, I invented gay pop. I, I started gay pop, y'all. I started gay pop. Thanks to Tim Curry in Rocky Horror. It's all about me. <laughs> now, now, y'all. Um, uh, Jojo for a while has been alleging that she has written her own music. I, I saw a previous TikTok where she alleges that she wrote all of her own. She is the sole writer. She says she was the sole she writer like that, though. on her old music. She never claimed it for this new song, Karma. She What's did her claim old music. She has this song like called Boomerang, like songs from when she was like 12. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's like, I'm gonna come back like a boomerang. I That song is camp, all right? She claims to be the sole writer. Now, I looked it up. She has four writers on that song. She's the last one listed. Fine. You cannot allege that. Now, she's continuing the drama of alleging that she is, she like was somehow writing on this song, Karma. Okay, that's her new rebrand song. If you haven't heard it, by the it way, that that song's been in my head all week. Like, it, it is a pretty poppy. Like I, I don't even really, mind it. I don't. It doesn't bother me. I don't like, mind having it in my head. The main part, the karma's a bitch. You should have known better. That is stuck in my head every day. But luckily for us, sleuths and the internet has found out that the original artist's name is Britt Smith. Britt Smith. All right. And guess what, y'all? Britt Smith has, this is Britt Smith. This was the, from the original Karma video. Britt Wait, Smith. He sounds great. I mean, it, it, JoJo's it, auto tune, so she doesn't sound bad, but I mean, this is a way better version. People online are like, oh, so, okay, it's not the song that's bad. It's JoJo. Got it. Uh, because Britt Smith's version is kind of banging. I was driving home um, earlier today and I was listening to it because, there's a thing on TikTok of saying like, hey, let's all stream Brit Smith's version, which is called actually called Karma's a Bitch. 
That's the whole thing. Huh. Um, so that it can outperform JoJo's. That's what people's um, things are right now. I mean, yeah. not to be vindictive, but at I the same still, time. JoJo's not really doing that much wrong. People are really heated. JoJo about is literally still do it. She doubled down on an interview where they're like, okay, She's so like Britt Smith. Though. I don't care. They're like, Britt Smith. did embarrassing stuff and so did I when we okay. were 20. Amanda, are you but feeling was, generous today? Are you feeling sweet and generous today? <laughs> No, I just feel like, okay, like, we if the internet was around when I was 20, I would have had just way worse stuff than that on the internet, I'm sure. Humiliating. Girl, uh, I think about some of the theme parties we have, and don't even say what they were, but I think we would be canceled to the moon and back if like anyone... gothic sluts party? Like, seriously. Like, yeah. Anyway, um, so... Uh, <laughs> okay. I think that... Once they come out with saying, hey, we know your songs by Brit Smith, JoJo should have just been like, yeah, it's cool. I loved it, so I wanted to do it. She instead says, well, we took the bridge and we, like, really made it, like, go. It was really flat before, and we just, like, kind of made it, like, go out of control. And then there's a TikTok that literally puts the bridge of hers and then it plays Brit Smith's. It's the exact same fucking thing. So is I don't it, know what is it Ms. like Jojo's Vanilla Ice saying about. like it's like dun dun dun. dun it it dun, is. Dun, it's dun, exactly. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> That's the difference. Exactly. That, that dun dun. You hear it? Hilarious. Justine, we I did mention this. Um, I can't remember where one of the places we talked. If you're not a part of the Pod in the City universe, um, we talked about like we yeah, you need like all the things we did oh talk about that Jojo and Tom Sand or Tom Sandoval went to Jojo's release party. God, the amount of vocal fry at that party, man. I wanna that's one of the ASMRs I want to do is Amanda, either Amanda plays Jojo or or I play Tom Sandoval and one we way just or talk the other. Like this to each other and we the just whole do time. like a back and forth. I really all right. I'm not very good at improv. Honestly, John, your shirt completely matches these stripes. That is crazy. It is really crazy. I I, I did it on purpose. I just knew what you were going to do. I do for, I did, there was something I forgot to mention in hot, or not in hot topics, but in housekeeping. I do want to say court cage 829. I don't know who that exactly is. is. Um, they did leave us a really sweet review. They gave us yeah. five stars. And uh, can I read it? It yeah. says, by Lita B was the title of it. Um, and it <gasps> says... God, you, you always get what you want, John. <laughs> I was like, this He's is like, going to backfire, John. You're going to get all bad reviews now, now, and everyone's coming to your defense now. I'm sure that people weren't living... I'm sure there are some people who weren't living for it, and it's fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> but again, you don't have to listen. But I really appreciate Court Cage because they said by Lita B as the title, five stars. It says, listening to John and Amanda is like having a conversation with friends. I look forward to new apps every week and also subscribe to the Patreon. Love them. And you know what? Court Cage 829, I love you. Me too. I can't, every time you were saying Court Cage, I thought you were going to say Court Case. It, it That is kind of what I kept thinking too. And I'm like, who is Court Cage? And then I tried to look up, but then we were, you know. If you're here, Court Cage, baby, I love you. And really, I do want to also say we've been get, we've been getting so many nice messages, super nice comments on all our videos. Swift Heart Rainbow, you've um, I don't know exactly who that. If Swift Heart Rainbow is here too, um, love you too. Love it. Do you want to talk? Do you want to talk about this really quickly? Oh talking? yeah, baby. All right. So if you aren't watching ASMR Unhinged, you're not getting the whole story. Again, it's part of our pod in the city universe. So yeah. it literally, they're like 15 to 20 minutes. Like put it on in the background. And if you, if you want to watch a man just funny. stop being polite and start getting real, <laughs> that's the energy that I'm given during all of those. But they're doing it's well. Kind of, so. Honestly, it's kind of funny and just funny. Yeah, no, I, I, I kind of like it. But um, this week, he, John did matches. So that's coming. What are you dropping that tomorrow? Yep. Um, and it was actually pretty, t- uh, pretty tantalizing. We're going to drop our... Um, ASMRs on Tuesday. I'm I'm playing with the idea of like Tingle Tuesday or something. I like all that bullshit. Like, nice. you know, that's maybe it. my teaching background. I like alliteration of, you know, let's make cute little themey things. So Love it'll it. be dropping at 420 on Tuesdays. So check it out, babies. I want to talk about this um TikTok that I saw. 
of um, I think yeah. it might have been her last show, but it's the entire mm-hmm. song of Funny Honey. And she's on a ladder. Ariana Maddox. Ariana Maddox. For people who as, aren't watching. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, in, um, in Chicago. And this whole time, I just assumed that she was a pretty mid. Mu- I knew she went to school for music theater, but I just assumed she was pretty mid. Um, and then I saw this thing. They got the whole thing. She's on a ladder the whole time. The whole time, I'm just like staring at her feet. And I was like, my ankles could never. But uh, I was surprised too. That I was like, wait, I forgot. That's the. I mean, I've seen the Chicago revival, but I was like, yeah. that's the staging for that whole song. I would be so nervous the whole time. I mean, your feet would hurt. Oh, I, I would be. A, just your arm. Right I think there. your arm would hurt because you're holding yeah. yourself. And I'm scared up of. Too. And she's pretty high up too. I'm like, be terrified. Yeah. I fall. That all that said, I was impressed to the point where if if she was a nobody and she was just on Broadway, I would still think she is good. Not even like, oh, she's mm-hmm. good enough to be on Broadway. She was so impressively good. I've seen like clips of, you know, Brandy doing it and like yeah. just other other celebrities. Like and Wendy Williams. The- well, but Brandy can sing, but like something about Ariana doing it was genuinely mm-hmm. so perfect. She's so beautiful and stunning. And she's funny in it. She has a character. I was just, I I wasn't giving her any credit and I was impressed. Now you saw this as well. I did. I thought it was great. I think that she has like the energy of like, she loves, she likes it and wants it. Mm -hmm. And I think that is probably what sets her apart more too compared to like someone like, you know, throwing whoever they've had, like they've had Claudia Schiffer and like weird. Erica Jane. Erica Jane, I could actually see being pretty good too. I... Yeah, but then I saw her do it, and it's not. Good. Oh, you I did. didn't see. I didn't see her like in person, but like I've seen clips of it, and it's bad. She just oh. she's nervous, so her face just goes dead when she's like doing it. I saw a clip this week. Uh, it was a. I think it was only The Voice, but it was Jinx Monsoon doing Audrey. Oh, and how is it? I think it was pretty good. It's like in the original key. Oh, I, I would didn't say expect anything less. Like I would say if it gives me Ellen Green vibes, how about that? Okay. Well, I obviously. It. I mean, and I, I would, think yeah, she she'll be I good. think I I think that that's an amazing 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 casting idea for I think it's perfect. Audrey. It's it's amazing. Um okay, what else? Uh, is that all about Ariana? I mean, she did she's great mm-hmm. and I hate saying that because I I find her a little bit like enough already well Ariana, we'll but... talk about vpr this week but we i think that you still hate ariana mm, i i keep putting into my head that you said you have to remember that it's only three weeks out from three like, months oh three months but still that's like oh three. i think that's like nothing out that's nothing from and and you're he blew up to her hang whole out world with. and then her and then him's talk okay well anyway we'll get into that in vpr okay. uh, another little thing that happened this week was shocking news shocking the golden bachelor after after the same amount of time that ariana had to film uh three months they have divorced he I, he divorced this well i thought that, i thought they were weren't going to actually get married because didn't it come out that she's rich and he has like no money a lot of people felt that at the end of the show that he ended up I was reading that, you know, once he found out that she had money, he was like, ooh. Oh, okay. I, I mean, guess he like, really he pulled the wool over a lot of our eyes though for those first few weeks. Everyone's like, "What a great guy!" And it's like, "Oh, that's right. Men can be narcissists and sociopaths so easily." I forgot what? about that. Yeah. What do you guys think about um, the Golden Bachelor? Anyone? Did anyone care? Uh, most was of the anyone... people like when me and Jody were recapping it, everyone was pretty much on the same team of like, ugh, like he picked her. She was just weird and like annoying. She and... she was she seemed very like desperate. E. Um, I feel like but, she, she looks like she has halitosis, but I mean, three <laughs> months. And then they went on, um, I don't know, whatever show this is, something ABC maybe. And they did an <laughs> interview and they're like, we still love each other. And we don't want this to deter any other golden people from looking for love. And it's like, okay. Maybe also, just don't get married. They shouldn't have gotten yeah, married. Or they but they gave just, them a special. So. They should have waited a year though to announce this too. Like you guys could have just stayed divorced. They don't live together. Agreed. Agreed. Stay, stay married and but you know what? The, your lives. It's tax season. So they probably needed to pay their taxes off. They needed to sell Maybe, their story. Maybe, but they could have ridden this out and done a whole bunch of reality shows together. They see each other like once a year. Mm. They do like an interview or something. Yeah. Talking about that like it's never too late. Well, they probably would be, they'll probably, I mean, Sala Wallaway 
Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. You're though. too, this is too funny. Is like, I love it. Yeah. You're so funny. That. Oh my God. <laughs> um anyway. Okay. Okay. Well, that's enough for a gold measure. Now, and, guess what? what? A big old piece of shit died. OJ died. There hey, you go. Listen, I don't know what else to say. He about beat this. the charges. I mean, it's just really um <laughs> people now all over like, the place. I'm glad. Thank God. I think more terrible people should die. Sorry. Oh my God. Do you know that we brought this up to my dad at the theater? And like me and Justine both thought he was being kidding for a few minutes really of this. And then we both realized, oh no, he's being genuine right now. I was like, dad, did you hear that OJ died? And he's like, uh -huh. yeah. And he goes, you know, he got convicted in a uh, civil trial, but he got off on the, on the criminal trial. And he's like, you know, the craziest thing that there's a basketball game on and the, he's driving in this uh, Bronco, I want to say. And they, they, uh, all this, this channels and we're just watching this. And, I, and at one point I'm like, are you telling us this because you think we don't know, or are you being funny right now? And he's like, "What?" And I'm like, "I was in seventh grade, Dad." Yeah, like, I, like, I vividly I it with remember you. watching, seeing that yes. on TV. He was he would have told us the whole. He was telling us like we had no idea. We're like, <laughs> we know. It was like the biggest news story that has happened in my life, at least top five. That's Hilarious. So funny. But um, I found oh. all these pictures of OJ. I, I just was trying to find pictures of OJ to throw up for this. And I noticed that in every picture, like you said, he just looks guilty. But every single picture that you find of him, it looks like he's looking over his shoulder like, have they have they figured it out? Oh, oh when's the other shoe going to drop? Well, it? there's a video out recently of Diddy. Okay. Where he's at a party or something and he's like looking, he's like looking, well, I mean, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with Diddy over here. P. Diddy. Yes. Yes. I've been following. That. Um, And he's like looking over his shoulder, like looking real paranoid the same. So. Well, anyway, OJ, uh, but all these celebrities are coming out now, like Kato, Kaylin and uh, people related to like the Kardashians. Oh, uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Actually, I don't know when this Caitlyn was. Jenner put out a, a tweet that's like, good riddance. And you know what? When Caitlyn Jenner dies, I'll say good riddance. Shh. Caitlyn Jenner literally killed someone too. That's uh, right! So yes, I do remember that. They maybe Caitlyn <sighs> Jenner may not have stabbed the person, but uh, well, I'm Salo Wallowe, um, I'm, I'm not too lost on it, but I don't want to bring too much up on it, because literally I've heard that we crazy try to keep shit, things more light here. crazy shit happens to people that fuck with Diddy, is all I've heard. Well, and that's allegedly. why all these celebrities are coming out being like, yeah, I knew that OJ was clearly guilty, and I'm like, I love how everyone's waiting, because they're all scared. That he's gonna stab them, which is which is weird because oh. he's a, he's innocent. So why were they so scared? I mean, he was innocent, John. Amanda. He stop. <laughs> okay. It's a yeah. trial. You got you got to trust America. Also, the the funniest thing with that is that like, look, like I know that's like a joke that like I think Scott Peterson's innocent. All the all these like, which I don't, but I do think that Scott Peterson, his trial was fucked up. Like I feel like maybe he should get a a retrial just to like. Uh, get all the suspicion out of there. He clearly did it, but like his trial was not great. There was a lot of weird things. With OJ, there was actual DNA and forensic evidence, DNA evidence, but it was at the point where no one really knew what that was and it was too boring to listen to a doctor describe it. But like there's undisputable evidence that OJ mm -hmm. did it, which I find mm -hmm. funny. I guess you got to find it funny. <laughs> I, I just. I... Anyway, so what's next, baby doll? We're actually going to get into our Vanderpump rules and uh, oh yeah, all our other stuff. So Do you, it, we're going to get into what are we watching? But this this might be the last time you see this thing that I worked so hard on because John's decided mm, no, we're not. Okay, doing I did not decide that. Okay, <laughs> you're you're confirming Lidavi's uh, suspicions right now. Get it playing, lady. <laughs> oh, I didn't even have my finger on it, but here we go. Uh, Do it. What are we watching? So pick me. Choose me. Love me. We were on the plane! <laughs> have some remorse. Have I hear him. I think that I may be the voice of my generation. I am someone who is looking for love. Hey, it's Che Diaz. 
Unfortunately, this week's episode of Ange just like that did not have enough Che Diaz, and I'm sad. Very little Che Diaz. It's it's bad. Why am I craving Che Diaz? I don't know. I said it like that. Anyway. There's the girl in the wheelchair though, and then I told you that story about Oklahoma that made you cry. I love, I love, I love. Okay. Um. So what, let's oh, talk yeah, about. I did Canada. cry. I did cry. You uh, did. <laughs> <laughs> like, stop telling me this. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, Vanderpump I didn't pull any pictures of this but I mean really what what the um what the whole story is this week is Joe right and I am I retract most bad things I said about Joe I still think she's kind of a pick me girl and she's still a little weird but um I completely believe her 100% I think Tom Schwartz is a monster although it seems like everyone kind of should have just known that and like you should know that already so don't date him but I felt horrible, horrible, horrible for her. Like, nothing but I, empathy for this girl. I completely, okay. I'm torn on them. Uh, first of all, the dye job that she gave, people are thinking that it was a sabotage uh, once she found out. She gave him that bleach job. Oh, I mean, if she people did, that's amazing. She sabotaged him. Anyway, um, I went through a, I, I've been through a similar situation where I was a Joe with a Schwartz, not with the part of the pick me part, we all, though. but in a way of like have. where I wanted that person and you spend time together, you basically are dating, you're having sex, except et cetera. But there's the one thing or something in them that is hung it's up on not, that. You yeah. can't be that person to them. And then, whatever. then there's that moment where they find someone randomly, just some person. And then, like my favorite. Like, oh, cool. Good like, oh, job. All right. And th they have it. In my favorite book, The Man of My Dreams, that's how like the whole last chapter, you spend the whole book with her in love with this guy and their best friends. And then it just ends with him meeting some girl at a bar and like getting her pregnant. And he's like, all mm -hmm. right, I I'm, we're going to get married. And this girl has been like waiting for like years and years. It's just so like. Uh, so relatable. I actually teared up for Joe in that moment because okay, when she yeah. was sitting on the couch crying, like I felt, I did feel bad. Um, and but I will say, when that was happening to me, I was I think twenty one, um, twenty two. I wasn't like forty and thirty five or whatever yeah, they she's, are. She she's, she's thirty six. I think. I think she's. No, oh, she okay, was 35. on Rachel Levis's podcast, which I listened to. And he's and 41. She, and right. he she watched how she he treated Katie. She seen the show and she still wanted him, which they get along well. So in that way, they actually kind of would be a good couple. But a guy like that who is immature and acts like that doesn't want someone else like that. He wants to be mothered. And I don't think Joe was gonna let like mother him enough. Um, I think though. He is also gross. Yeah, and I, I think I think that Joe, I, I think he's embarrassed to bring her, like he's embarrassed to call her his girlfriend because maybe she is a little quirky and like, I guess annoying is not the correct word, but like a little quirky and zany and not just like, I think he just wants to be with like a silent supermodel type girl. I also wonder, I wonder if there's a part too of like, he knows that Katie thinks Joe is just, disgusting and gross so like he's like okay well yeah. like not to sound twisted or whatever but maybe he's thinking like you know you know katie doesn't like you know i think that there's something with that you know you want to like look good to your ex you don't want to yeah, be like oh true, he yeah. got with this like mm -hmm. girl that obviously i hate and think is disgusting and spooky um, but I also still think Joe is guilty in when she says that she knew nothing about Raquel and Tom Sandoval together. Like, bitch, they went on a double, like, vacation. They went on a couple's vacation Yeah, together. her story is Don't more just like that, that she assumed that him and Ariana were broken up is now kind of what her story is. Because I, did you listen okay, to well, the podcast? Okay, well, she changed her story. I did. I heard, I didn't listen to the whole thing because I cannot listen Oh Raquel. no! Talk. Oh, Raquel is a terrible interviewer. And but I heard her. clips 
on guess where right and TikTok. i feel yeah me too uh well but then i went to listen to the whole thing didn't do her any favors it would have been mm -hmm. better for joe if she had not um gone on the if she had laid low let the episodes air and be like now stay silent because i think America people would build empathy from this episode exactly she could have been like the, and she the hero she went on the mm -hmm. reunion though and she said that everyone was aghast that uh, when the truth was revealed. What, that they've been fucking? Who's shocked by that? Who is shocked? It was just that, that yeah, that, that they were actually dating. He that, ain't yeah. shit. <laughs> well, anyway. You know he'll get his dick sucked wherever he can. Come on. Well, he has anyway. this new girlfriend now, but anyway. Who's his 12? Hair yeah i know yeah. not the best um, um i did really like the moment where james is like uh, is is everyone kidding here or like do they not realize that tom's been dying his gray hair for years it changes shades of brown all the time i'm like <laughs> i love it which i mean it kind of is true i love how coked out james is all the time now um, i don't think he is because he's with ally him and ally i really they all like do them together. together i don't Allie does coke. Okay. She's a Capricorn, I found out. So I like Allie. Oh, Capricorns don't do coke as a rule. I'm a Capricorn, okay? Amanda. And you don't do coke. I don't. Oh my God. <laughs> That's terrible. Booger sugar. Goodbye. <laughs> What else are you watching, Amanda? What okay, so Grace? I did, I did binge. What well, hang Grace? on, I oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, I, I binged Euphoria a second time, and I really, really do think that you should watch it. It is so gay. There are dicks all over that show. Well, I saw Swinging this, around. yeah, and I was shook because this is the most like a face looks right. Anytime I've seen her in anything now, her City face Queen. doesn't move. What's happening? I think this she got a lot of filler. I found this scene. Um, this something. is from this is from a very good episode um, where uh, she's she has this like secret relationship with her best friend's ex, and she's like freak. She's she, it's a really good emotional meltdown that she has in the bathroom. So I found that to show you, like, look, Sydney Sweeney can act, and that was a, she has this crazy like meltdown in the bathroom. So I don't know. You should watch it. And lots of dicks, lots of drugs, lots of good acting, lots of men. A lot of man candy, a lot of gay sex. Eric Dane penis. Oh, is it his real penis? Uh, probably not. It's like it's like I know he fucks big. a guy though, right? He fucks like uh, he fucks a lot of like uh, transsexuals and twins because oh. he's he's coming to terms with his his own sexuality in his fifties. That's kind of okay, his story. Babe. Anyway, I really <laughs> I think, think you would like that show. I think what happens to me with a lot of shows is like. I see that it has a bunch of episodes and I'm like, I'm not even starting that. I can't get to, I can't get into that. Cause I also want to watch that show white Lotus. Cause there's oh, that's a great show. On, that too, on that too. You should not just watch it for Jennifer Coolidge is also in it. No, I know. I love, I love, I love her. And I love the premise of that show, but isn't Sydney Sweeney on white Lotus? Yes. And she's great in it. Um, oh. Honestly, John, you shouldn't just be watching that for the dicks either. Both seasons of that is so good. Like well, was written by crazy. Mike. Mike White, which yes. he is hilarious. And he's like my favorite um, Survivor person ever. Did you uh, know he was on Survivor? Uh, yeah, I know. When I watch a show, I know everything. <laughs> Believe me, I know. Yeah. Oh, um, I know Justine I know. wants to know your um, opinion on on uh, Jacob E. Lordy, who I okay, think Jacob E. Like Lordy in, in the show. I haven't watched Euphoria because she's I asking my opinion Jacob. in the show. Okay, but okay so well, he's like isn't he like contending with his sexuality he is but he's also like like a not a murderer but he's just a huge piece of shit but to like to because he's contending with his sexuality um well he's also eric dane's son and he like found his dad's porn of him like fucking all these like underage kids as a kid so that's kind of how he it's very complicated i again i think you'd like the show <laughs> that why that's the reason you think i'd like it yes it made me think, it made me think of you the whole porn. time no but right. anyway everyone should watch you for it it's um, only two seasons and there it's like six seven episodes yeah Great. Yeah, I, I can tell you're not going to. I would like <laughs> to, but I'm really busy. Okay. Anyway. Got a lot of Barbies to pick up, to pick up throughout the day. I can't watch Euphoria while I'm picking up a Barbie. It's hard true. if I had a driver. <laughs> Um, anyway. do you want to talk about I'll talk about Grays really quickly. So this week mm -hmm. on Grays, uh-oh, things are heating up. Um, 
she, uh, Ellen Pompeo, who's unrecognizable at this point, um, is uh, she's in town. She's at Grace Sloan Memorial, and she uh, and her baby is. I don't know why I said it like that. I was trying to say bebe, and then I decided to just say baby, and then it sounded French. Um, her son is getting like a like uh, his appendix out. He needs an appy and he's all the way across the country. Oh no. So she calls her boyfriend and the whole time she's mad at him because he, uh, he took, he didn't tell her, he wasn't keeping her updated on this appy that her son's getting. That was the entire episode. Her appy? The ap appendectomy, but they call it an appy on Grey's. An appy. That makes me think of like an appetizer. Like, hey, you get yeah, an appy. Yeah, it makes me think of some uh, jalapeno bites. Um, okay, then, so then these two, um, this girl, who uh, the one girl, I don't know what her name is, the blonde. I'm sure that she was thrilled with the angle that this picture was taken, by the way, for this promotional <laughs> photo. Like, come on. But she's dating this oh, other yeah, girl yeah. here because once again, as we all know, all the women on the show are bisexual, and uh, pussy is good. I they're in, a, yeah, they're in a little fight now because the the blonde girl took the other one off of her surgery. But I'm sure they'll work it out because they're bisexual. Um, so wow. and, and so then, like it does this uh, does the show ever just feel like it? You're just watching the same thing like over and over. These are all like, recycled all the stories. stories. Sound literally the there exact. All, the other big storyline was that some guys. Okay, so the um the big thing is that. The big tragedy in the ER is that another like intern hospital okay. school exploded or something. So all, all the patients are like pe like people training to be doctors. They're in school. They're in doctor school. Okay. And this one guy is there and he like hurt his arm. Then he, he goes up to the roof and he's like about to jump off the roof. And then two of the interns go up and they're like, don't do it. And he's like, I don't know, man. It's just, I thought I'd do better on my exams, but. I didn't do very well on my exams. I was like last place. I just don't know if I can be a doctor. And then the one intern is like, I agree. The, the exams are hard. I barely passed mine too. And then he like decides to like get off the roof and then he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an and just like that story type story like <laughs> a good five, and time on. waster. Yeah. A nice time filler. 42 Fill minutes. Time, baby. And then the last <laughs> thing is that uh oh, Joe might be pregnant. This is that bitch who I hate because she only acts through um posing with her face and she's doing it in this picture. Oh, I might be pregnant. And then the it's guy's like how I act. And then the guy's like, they take a pregnancy test, and that, that guy who's holding her is like, it's okay. Whatever it is, we'll be there together. And then he looks and he's like, it's negative. Don't worry. And she's like, oh, okay. And he's like, I'm relieved. And she's like, why are you relieved? Did you not want to have a baby? And he's like, no, I'm just saying it's, it's too much right now. And then she looks at the test and she's like, this is a faulty test. I still might be pregnant. And then you find out at the end of the episode, she's actually not pregnant, but she decides that she does want a baby. <laughs> well, I'm going to say I'll take a pass on Grays. I I'm never jumped on you to watch Grays. <laughs> well, I'm going to preemptively pass on it. Thank you, though. All right. Um, now, let's get into I, SNL Corner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. baby. It's SNL Corner, starring Amanda Kaczynski. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Amanda Kaczynski. You're pointing the wrong way. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. No, yeah, I think you were pointing the right way, actually. I don't know, it's hard to tell. Uh, this week, Ryan Gosling, uh, Canadian star, was the host. Here he is. Oh, that's a bad picture. But anyway, he was good. He Okay, first of all, the the opening sketch, like before the monologue, mm -hmm. was that stupid fucking sketch where they're like the alien abduction thing where Kate McKinnon made him laugh that one time and then they ran the joke into the ground and made it a recurring bit. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I You've definitely like seen that. clips of it. Okay. Where they were like abducted by aliens and it's like three people in a chair and one's Kate McKinnon and one's him and then one's Cecily Strong and they're talking about their experience in getting abducted by aliens getting like probed okay and is she the lady who's like sitting like this yes with her legs spread okay, yes. yeah so I she know. made them laugh 20 years ago when they first did that and then this is what they tried to do with um uh with debbie downer where it's like that sketch was funny because everyone was genuinely laughing and breaking the first time and then mm -hmm. they bring these things back and now that everyone's kind of forced to break character so well, that's what i they think did i here. saw that there was like a genuine character break that was pretty okay. like that's kind of 
no, all over I, the place. I right? love a character break. And I think Ryan got when Ryan Gosling comes on, everyone kind of knows like, well, he's going to break. So let's kind of lean into it by. OK, so like they were great. Th this Beavis and Butthead sketch was that's the hilarious. one I'm talking about. Um, everyone should watch that sketch because I, I just love watching people genuinely laugh. It makes me laugh. It makes me happy. Um, and Heidi, what's her last name? Heidi. Gartner, okay. Gartner. Oh, yeah. uh, she mm -hmm. uh, she hadn't seen either of their like makeup, so uh -huh. her she has to like turn around and react to it, and she is laughing so it's like the biggest break I think I've ever seen on SNL, and it is genuinely genuinely funny, and I was like hilarious sketch, definitely written by millennials. Um, I, I feel like you must have been a big Beavis butthead fan. Real I actually, butthead head. I actually did like Beavis and Butthead. I didn't well, have actually, that channel. I, I think growing up, I was kind of scared of it. Um, and I was, yeah, I was scared kind of, of scary. South Park growing up because I was kind of like a goody two shoes. Like, oh, and then <laughs> when I got a little bit older, I liked Beavis and Butthead. Like when I started, you know, enjoying the devil's lettuce is when I probably started liking Beavis and Butthead. And now I think it's funny. I think the movie's funny. Um, the movie's funny. <laughs> the Cornholio, I need TP yeah, for my Yeah, it's so bubble. stupid. It's just so fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, no, but I loved, I mean, it's, it's um, a time. But it was funny. Now, by, okay, Weekend Update was rough. Usually, like, usually Weekend Update is like where everything kind of comes together. It wasn't good. Mm -hmm. But by the fourth sketch where everyone's cracking up, I was annoyed. Like by the there was a sketch with him and Bo and Yang. Well, why were, were like, they all because breaking. I think Ryan Gosling breaks really easily, which I think I do oh. too. I am the easiest person to break on stage because I don't take I don't take theater seriously. But okay. um, but it was just by the end, it's like, okay, but like let's get through this, all right? Uh -huh. And and then there's also there's always like one person in the sketch that won't break, like Keenan. It kind of ruins it for everyone. You know, there's like one person who's like yeah. taking it way too seriously. And it's like, okay, this isn't fun anymore. Anyway, but it was good. Everyone go watch the Beavis and Butthead sketch. I mean, it was better than Kristen Wiig last week. I'll tell you that much. Way better energy. Everyone was having fun. Well, Ryan Gosling, like, yeah. Oof. It was good. Anyway. Um, That was Now, it, baby it reindeer. Amanda texted me earlier and is like, hey, if you're working on the cover for the video, put baby reindeer on it. I'm like, what the Fuck is he, baby he, he says these texts as if I'm aggressive the way he is. Except I'm like, hi, I happy days. If you don't mind, if you could maybe just throw this in, I'll even send you two pictures. Never made it in. Make, I make did, sure you. I did put it in. Oh, you did. Oh, I didn't. Okay, I didn't it's on the, the big one. one, babes. Hang on, let's look. It's this oh, you put guy. Ariana on there. Oh, okay, great. You put you put the matches. All right, love it. You put Joe. All right, love it. Great, fine. I I, I, I tweaked. I did, I did some tweaking. <laughs> that made it into the to the stream yard at the at the final hour. Um, but anyway, what was I talking about? Baby reindeer. Baby Justine reindeer. told me about this. She's like, hey, this just dropped on Netflix. Me and her fiance are watching it, and um. And I was like, oh, I guess I might as well. It's so good. It's a mini series. It's about, and the fun thing is that it just dropped two days ago on Netflix. It's number one on UK Netflix, in Canada Netflix, and in the US Netflix. Wow. And um, it's a, it's only seven parts, half an hour each, baby. That's it. Half an hour per episode. Okay. So another plus there. It's about a comedian who is the star of the show. And he's he also wrote the show. It's based on a one-man show he did about his own personal experience of um, this woman who was just stalking him, but he kind of was into the stalking because it kind of validated him a bit. And then it got, it goes pretty far and it's a true story and it's good and intense and very well acted and kind of funny at times, but you can knock the whole thing out in a day. I only have one more episode to watch, um, but I think you'd like it. And there's def definitely some gay stuff in there. Oh, okay. Have some I like penetration. When... Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Fingy Damn. penetration. It's not very sexy, though. It's not. It's actually the opposite of sexy. Okay, great. So, I, so Spira, like... you'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> I really love It's not unsexy, exactly consensual. Unsexy <laughs> finger penetration. All right. I want to do a little, before we move on, I do want, I want to do a little seventh inning stretch here. If you are not on our Patreon, go there right now. Patreon.com slash pod in the city. Join it. If you'd like, we have at least like 24 hours of episodes. You could have an entire full day of listening to us ramble on. And if not, you can also join our free Patreon where you can see our and just like that videos. Now, 
please go over there. I would love, can we, can someone join while you're watching? Though I'm sure everyone watching right now already is yeah. on our Patreon. So uh, um, also I'd like, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and, and hit the like. It really helps us. And, and hit the bell. Um, if you go back later, we do also <laughs> post these as separate videos. If you want to leave us a comment under those, it those are also really helpful. They help boost us up. Oh, We're Solo so all the way says, I've been spending the last week catching up on the Patreon. Now, John, do you think that if somebody actually spent 24 hours listening to us, I think they'd look like Doc Brown by the end. They would just look like... I like, think that... Um, <laughs> I think you would definitely see two people that are like you know, living their lives on Patreon for you. We really, I mean, we're just like, it's about ourselves there. So, I mean, if you think we talk a lot, a lot about ourselves here, we really talk about ourselves over there. If you're one But you got some other. personal stories like that. Like when we went to that uh, Hedvig show and that guy's knee got busted up. <laughs> You guys do, we are working on a deep dive on our Godspell experience. So um, that is in the works. It's hard to get there. All right. Um, we've do you want to get into a Jones movie corner? I do, y'all. It's time. Let me see. Can I? Oh. Find... It's time for my movie corner, babies. Now this week I went, I got to see three movies in the theater. Um, I really pounded them out. Um, weirdly, <laughs> okay. had similar names. Yeah. Uh, it was so weird. The first one I saw was called Dog Man, okay? This was only playing at one theater here. This guy is Caleb Landry Jones. He, is it in French? It says Dog Man, un film de Luc. Okay, Bisson. well, it's um, it's directed by Luc Besson, who is like, who is a French director who directed um, like um, Fifth Element and this other movie, Valerian, something, something, something. And he's directed a, a bunch of other stuff. So that was part of why I wanted to go see this because he's a great director. Now this guy, Caleb Landry Jones, he was in a, he's been in a bunch of movies. He plays like, the, he always plays like the weird, like kind of brother is what he's been in multiple things, a weird brother. And this he plays like a person who was um, like basically abused as a child and forced to live in like a cage with dogs um, growing up as a child. Okay. okay. His father was like very abusive and had all these dogs in their backyard, like in a big cage, like a kennel and would what make kind of dogs? all kinds of dogs. Like mm -hmm. there was like every kind of dog you could have wanted in this movie. Amanda, I think you'd like it. I think you'd like it. I no like dog, dogs getting abused. Not one dog gets Don't abused. The or there is no dog abuse. Okay. There's not one ounce of dog abuse. There's child abuse. No, but there's no dog. Even abuse. better. <laughs> Sweeten the deal for whole Amanda. <laughs> there's like there's so this poor kid. It, I, I cried in this movie, of course, but he ends up having a, like this connection to dogs where he basically can like. Tell like do telekinesis with dogs kind of where ah. he like can tell them what to do and they listen to him and they do all this stuff and he does like a revenge type thing so he has people coming after him and the, the dogs help him um defeat the people basically so totally check it out if you get the chance I also saw another movie weirdly this one was called monkey man so I saw dog man and monkey man <laughs> Okay. This Ooh, Dev one. Patel. Dev Patel. Dev yeah. Patel is which one? He was in um, Slumdog Millionaire. Ah, yes. And a bunch of other things too. But oh, that's Jordan the one that I Peele. Think Jordan Peele produced it. So what the, what happened with this is this is a movie that Dev Patel made. Like he directed it. Um, and I guess it was supposed to be released on streaming, like Netflix or something. And Jordan Peele saw it and bought the rights to it so that it could be released like in theaters. Um, and... It was really, this again was another kind of like revenge movie. Dev Patel's like mother was killed by like a drug type kingpin. It takes place in India. And um, then it's all about revenge. Uh, Dev, Pat Dev Patel plays a character who has to fight. The reason it's called Monkey Man is he, he has to fight in these like underground fighting rings and like basically be the person who loses when they tell him to lose. He just has to get beat up like majorly. So he loses. And then, um, the same people who have him in that are the people who killed his mother. So it's like this whole revenge thing. Now with this movie, I had to 
close my eyes a few times because it was so gory, um, like of beating people up. Oh like, yeah, I don't just, like that. Like bloody, like just it's, and yeah, real. Like every shot was like. Here's my problems with this movie. Every shot was so up close that like it would be like a, a shot of an eyeball. Then, like, a bomb exploding. And then, like, three shots, like, tight eyeball again. Blinking. Tighter on the eyeball. Then do a person punching. Wait, hang on. Do you remember that? Did we talk about this? It was that documentary that was on Netflix, and it was, like, three or four parts about that woman who goes missing. Do you know what I'm talking about? What do you guys know what I'm talking about? And there, and it was, and they they did a lot, a lot of reenactments and they like put a mm-hmm. mask over her. And there were like minutes long footage of like somebody's eye like this. And it would just be like the camera's right here, and then her her eye is just doing this <laughs> for like five minutes. And I'm like, oh my God, we get it. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> this instead was like that for a split second, and then it would go to like 50 other things, like super up close. There'd be moments where I was like, what's happening but it also had some of the most gory bloody shit if you like bloody people just getting their asses beat justine would love it go for this movie all right all right here's a photo from it that i took in the theater this is dev patel like ripping his chest open there was like oh nice ideas and and all that john you're not supposed to take pictures in the movie theater it's illegal it was hot in this movie i didn't take this in the movie theater all right the last (laughs) Uh, all right now this is about a precocious little bitch this little girl annoyed the shit out of me okay who um she like finds a spider and uh decides to like put the spider in a jar and like give it bugs and stuff and it grows and grows now the very 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 it's like little shop of horrors now i was going amanda what you cut my that, that was I my, always got little shot on the brain. Me and Justine were, were talking about it all week for some reason. <laughs> the beginning of this movie is like a, a, a total a eclipse of the sun fireball coming from oh. the from the sky. Oh wow! Okay. It lands. It flies through a window, and it literally is like an egg, and it bursts open. It looks like Audrey too, like opening like this, and uh-huh. the spider comes out of it. And then over time, see you can see in the picture. The spider yeah. becomes huge. It becomes gigantic. It starts eating everybody. Yada, 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 yada. Okay. I actually really liked this movie. It was kind of fun. It was kind of cute. Um, it was... This little girl was really annoying. But it does lead me into... And now I'm Oh, you still have Sting Up. Oh, that was my... Oh, no, this that's fine. This oh, is part okay. of it. Now, please, I'm sure someone else is like, you know, there's a lot of um, problems, bigger problems in the world. You know, people are dying, Kim. But uh, I'm going to need movies to come up with better titles. Why does every movie need to be a one-word title Immaculate. that's, like, somewhat related to what we're watching? Like... This movie is about a giant alien, an alien spider that like goes on a killing rampage. What should it have been called? Little Shop of Spiders. Little Spider of Horrors. Little Shop of Spiders is better. No. punched it down. Shop and spiders, you know, you replace the shop. Little anyway, Shop of Amanda. Spiders actually makes sense though. No, Little, little Spider of Horror. Oh, Little, little Spider. spider. Of horror. Anyway, y'all. Anyway, guys, if you'd like to hear more of this, check out our Patreon. Um, no, uh, I what just do you mean think, by, like, by this, you mean us yelling at each other? Yes, <laughs> us like acting like friends of 20 years and going back and forth, um, uh-huh. which Lita B doesn't like. But <laughs> <laughs> some people weren't liking it. <laughs> Here's my feeling is like, just come up with something more creative because when you go to look online, I'm Google searching the word sting for your movie. That's what I'm searching. Yeah, when when you added that to our live notes, I I was like, is he about to talk about Sting? That's, like from that's what I mean. Like yeah. it started with like Frozen, like Frozen. I get it, fine, but why not call it like the Ice Queen and her sister? I don't know something. Come up with something cool. Like like um, back in the day, they would have these like you know really interesting. Chuang elaborate- Fu, thanks for everything, Julie Numa. 
Thank you. Snap, you know what? Snap, snap, That's snap. a reference from it within the movie. It also has a shortened version. You can just say, oh, to Wong Fu. And you know what? It gives me everything I need. Sting? Sting? Yeah. It's, now, yeah. the reason, Salo Alloway, the reason that it was called Sting was because the little girl named it Sting. She oh decided God, to name stupid. the spider Sting. How about alien spiders from outer space? I don't know. I something th like. There is a movie. This might be wrong. Something that my dad told me that he was just fucking around with me. But then I still believe it to this day. There's a movie from like the 70s or 80s called Ben. That was about a, a rat. Uh -huh. And then Michael Jackson wrote a song for the movie called Ben. Uh -huh. And it's a good song. And yeah. I always like that it was about a rat. And you know that the song Bye Bye Birdie used to make me cry? Like, if you even played it for me, I would start crying because in my head, I I thought that meant that a bird was going away. <laughs> okay, well, Amanda, you would not like Sting. I do not recommend it for you because literally a cat dies in it. Oh, my and, God! And a bird. And, and they show, no. like, they show the, like, cat and bird both dead. So I did not like that. What um, Justine said, eight legged freaks. That's a that is a funny movie title. And That's that is a hilarious a movie. title. That is a movie, though. I know she's referencing oh, oh, like that. No, movie. I know, I know that she was referencing that. I just didn't, I thought you thought that. Oh, anyway. Oh no, I, rem I remember the promos for that. I remember specifically for some reason, like whenever like news programs had to like talk about like entertainment tonight had to mention uh -huh. it. You could always tell that the person saying the title was having fun with it. Like this weekend in theaters, eight legged freaks, snakes on a oh, plane. Exactly. Gotta cut these motherfucking snakes off this motherfucking plane. Legally blonde too, red, white, and blonde, or whatever. It's red, white, and blonde. Blaine. <laughs> that's the that's the musical in Waiting for Guffman. Oh red, yeah. White, and Blaine. <laughs> da, 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 da. See, waiting for Guffman. Come on. It's kind no. of a bad title for that movie, but it is like it makes perfect. sense. It does make sense. Because that is what they're doing. Guys, Hollywood, if you're watching, if you're out there watching our YouTube show, um, the Weekly Roundup, please subscribe and like. Uh, fix it. Come up with some better titles. I don't want a one-word movie title. Sorry about it. You know okay, now, you know what I like the best about this segment of Jones Moans? Is, yes. first of all, I realized when we played the thing at the beginning, we didn't get dinged from YouTube. Ooh. for the song you used in there and also i like that this wasn't you screaming into the microphone see guys when we get feedback oh, like helpful feedback then we fix it okay i will say though someone did leave a comment uh i can't remember exactly who on our yeah, and just ugly. like that and they were like oh. scream into the mic all you need to baby oh okay and i was like thank you i'm just saying like you're you have picked up podcasting faster than anyone I've ever seen. I'm trying. Baby. All right. Oh, Erica's here. Erica Hensel. She'll be on a Surreality Pod. She'll be on our 420 special. Yeah, yeah. What do you... Uh, we 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 still want some ideas for the 420 special. We have... There's a lot of good ideas, but if oh, anyone has any other ones, um, yeah, we need to get that shit together. I have some plans. It's this Saturday, y'all. Get ready. Central Standard Time. You can, all, you can toke up with us at exactly 420. Are all we right. ready what? to TikTok? Yeah, let's wrap it up. TikTok, you don't stop. Probably cut the end off of that one too. I love the audio quality of that, that I was clearly holding my phone up to my <laughs> No, I don't even know if it was that. No, I think I was holding my phone to my computer garage band while I played Rosie O'Donnell through TikTok. TikTok oh, that's TikTok. Rosie O'Donnell. Yes, that's what she says at the end of all of her TikTok videos. TikTok. Uh, okay. Miss Peaches! I'm just, I don't even like, I've been just everything about her i've seen all these two we were in and chicago so cute and i just Jeez. i can't i've been really teetering about wanting a dog again <gasps> well but i would have had one by now easily honestly joan when i was imagining like walter like it, like impending doom of him not making it through that surgery i did have the thought i'm like i feel like i would get a dog the next day because i can't i can't imagine living well, without a dog like, yeah you yeah you're i think your life lends itself well to having a dog yeah and it's just i'm just happier with a dog and i mean cats are great too but it's not the same as having a dog if i had a really cuddly a if i had like a quirky saint Clair cat then yeah yeah who would just cuddle up if like do you see i have a picture of rose there 
I can't see wall. it right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's a that's a conversation I've been, enjoyable for just I've the been two seeing months. a TikTok trend where it's like, and then I thought maybe this is why you wanted me to send you a picture of Butch was because it's this thing where it's like it shows the first slide says um cats have been known to pick up the traits of their owners or something, and then you slide yeah. to the next one. And people have like put pictures with their cat, like oh no, of, it's not that. But I do need you, you know. to send me that picture, like post. Just piece. one picture? No, send me a bunch, baby. Oh, okay. You don't even know what's coming. You don't even fucking know. Now I just realized I have so much work to do for this 420 thing. Okay, anyway, we'll deal with that throughout the week. Um, okay, so Miss Peaches was in Chicago. She's freaking cute. I love that Dave Portner just carries her around. She looks really heavy. I, I think she looks heavy, heavy, but I also think what's so cool is like. One, I don't think Dave Portnoy seems like a very good guy. The more I see his videos, I'm like, okay, no, you're good with the stock. Fine. Oh, what are you Fine. Now? But um, one of the signs that a dog trusts you and like loves you is that they show their belly. And that dog is just, you can tell Especially she is Especially after so what content. she's been through. Yeah. I think it was like three years or four years or seven years of just like abuse. A hoarding, hoarding. situation, right? What's this one? This is now, okay. This this one. This is Dave Portner watching golf, and then Miss Peaches is staring at him. And in the video, he's like, "Miss Peaches, I need to watch golf. I have a million dollars riding on this." I saw that. And it like, made me angry. <laughs> made me Jesus. angry. They're also. He's also. I also saw a link for Miss Peaches' um, gear, and I mean, that's what all the money, the proceeds of all of the merchandise goes to helping. And I was like, I think I was going to ask you, would you wear a Miss Peaches hat? Like, do you wear hats? Like, I wore. I put a hat hats? on yesterday, and I actually even put it on backwards. Okay, now I, I've seen you in like cabby hats and stuff. I don't I've like really like. I have a very, hat. very, very big head very big head you look good in hats though uh, i like you in hats anyway thanks amanda now i crocheted you that uh like that um <coughs> tie-dye toque that time and you look really I, good in I, I have i was like a bit, i have like three of your hats that yeah you've probably made. now this may i just want to give a trigger warning i i know jody's not here but i think this might trigger her um, oh my god, this is so Howie funny. The crab. Um, We're on Mold Watch 2024. I heard though that this one might not be good, right? No, there are, it's always like this. Oh. Great. Howie always goes about like 30 days without eating as she tries to because each time she's molting, it's like she's like it hurts. It's breaking she's her getting old big. Skin. Yeah, it's yeah. breaking all of her shell off. But the mom had to go to Las Vegas for cheer oh, celebration. Yes. yes. Right. Why have okay. you has this come up on your shit? Or is I, I saw nervous? this. I saw that one where they're like, I'm very nervous because I have to okay, be yeah. gone. Well, how are we supposed to be molting? I've never been gone during Howie's molt. Blah, blah, blah. And that's kind of how she talks to you. No, well, I know she's Howie. Hi, Howie. Yeah. I feel like I can do a really good impression of her and also Miss Rachel, which is also on my list. Have Hi, you? Hello. Can you say mama? Mama. No, Amanda, ew. Have you seen, <laughs> have you seen I hate that Miss Rachel voice. It's sick. It's I do think that's the only time gross. I find babies cute because some of the babies like reacting oh, they to that love. are really they, cute. They go crazy for Miss Rachel. Some of them are drooling, which I find disgusting. But like the ones that aren't drooling, totally clean face, wearing clothes, not just a diaper. I'm like into it. I'm gonna say Annie. Thanks for commenting. I haven't seen you comment before. And you've said people with big heads look better in hats than those with tiny heads. And you know what? I'm going to take it to my grave, baby. I'm taking that to my freaking grave. Embrace the hat, Joan. Have you um, ever seen on TikTok Biggs the dog? No. It, it has a colored mohawk. But the voice reminded me because its, its owner is... It's almost made me have to unsubscribe because her voice. Oh, this is yeah. how she describes every voice. She's like, and the big's going down to the neighborhood. And the big's going out with his mommy. Is big's going out to daddy today? Yeah, okay, and I'm that. like, okay, girl. <sighs> there Maybe was... real it like slightly. <laughs> Erica said here, Amanda told me my toddler doesn't count as a pet. Yes, that conversation happened. I was like, you sent me a picture of your so pets. I'm so interested to see don't what that's Don't you worry about be. it. There was also this dog on TikTok that was like one of those, you know, that trend that's like, show me your dog that just won't fucking die. This was one of them. Its name was Eddie, Eddie on wheels. And it was this busted ass Yorkie. And me and Jody 
hated this thing, but we really just hated that, like, the mom. Every oh. day she'd go, Eddie, hello, Eddie, good morning to the Eddie. Exactly. And it was this busted fucking dog. This dog wanted to die more than anything I've ever seen. No teeth, just, like, couldn't walk. It's two, like, back feet were just, like... See, I do think that there's a time that it's okay. <laughs> and this dog would just go, Rah! It was like oh my God. funny. Like she, this dog wanted to kill this. Oh, I human. Hate, no, I hate that. I hate <laughs> like, that. This dog hates you. Anyway, that that dog did pass away, and I was like, well, at least I don't have to hear. Good morning to Eddie. Oh, Eddie, so good morning. Hey, you guys remember this moment? Amanda's glad a dog died, so she didn't have to be inconvenienced. <laughs> no, I did. I did send it to Jody that day, and I was like, all right, Peter, out of here, guys. If you guys want to check out what I'm talking about, it's Eddie on Wheels on TikTok. I promise you'll be like you'll be like whoa um anyway uh do you have anything oh oh but how is it has like 50 other topics on tiktok but i'm like no those are just like fillers but like how about beauty makeovers beauty makeovers i i've been watching a lot of like a couple of the same like a couple of different accounts that do like makeovers that are clearly free and just like a haircut oh. and it's just so amazing how different these people look just with the right haircut uh -huh. um so i don't i didn't write any down you just you said that it wasn't on um, the actual official list so i was oh prepared. i think it is on the list anyway it's not um, on the picture though i wanted to finish up with howie though the oh, mom's in, and she more. won an she won an award for like um at the cheerleading competition yeah i don't know if this was actually a cheerleading though it was called like cheer fest or something what does it say here oh okay this must be something else because i saw a bunch of other under other oh god other tiktok people okay, going well, they shouldn't, to this? cheer choice awards but that sounds like it's cheerleading i thought it was cheerleading too so they should call it something that is but more like But I swear like I saw some based. other TikTokers at this. Um, like she, that yeah, Mama she... Tot. Mama oh. Tot lady. Okay. And I was like, weird, she's at a cheerleading competition? I was confused. That makes more sense why she'd have to leave Howie for that. But she she won. And like when they say her name, the crowd does go pretty wild. Okay, like, I was not expecting her to look like that. I actually thought Howie the Crab's mom was like 70 years old. <gasps> I know. I thought she was much older, but now she's like probably my age or younger. But but she won for like um, I don't know, like exposing the care of smaller pets that should be food, as Jody would say. Of that course, I, this, I sent it to Jody, and she's like, "It's food." And she's like, "Come oh on!" Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so I'm sorry, but I thought it would be nice to check in on Howie. But Howie won't watch. Um, Baby. We'll, see, we'll see if she makes it. It That's would be it. sad. I, you know. Oh, well, of course. I, I would. Like, I will puts cry way too much sad stuff out. It's enough. And just that thing that you mentioned, like that. I think of you. Uh, I. Like, oh I my god. That. Oh, you know what? The other thing I keep seeing is that girl. That's like the. Ch -ch -ch -ch, and then it's like uh, she's pretty, but four hundred million likes. I have no idea what you're talking it's about. It's like some girl in a car and she has her the camera like this and then she moves it away and then she does this and it has like 400 million likes. And then everyone else is is stitching it saying, or not even stitching it, just 400. She's pretty, but 400 million likes. Uh-huh. I don't understand what the trend here. That or the Chick-fil-A girl who scares me. <laughs> and I feel like that girl should have got fired. I don't think they didn't, but. Like that's, it's, I don't even think she should have been fired because that's the kind of shit I would do. But. I'm surprised that she didn't get fired, especially from Chick-fil-A. At first, I thought she was just, like, really, truly cracked out. And yeah. And then came to come to find out she's acting. She's acting! <laughs> That's Do from um, All Stars 1. Um, I was Wait, thinking, I'm acting. I had <laughs> my, an idea. My father fucked uh, Marlena Dietrich. <laughs> I'm acting. I have an idea. <laughs> yeah. I had an idea. I thought that each of us should do a, do a we should do a rundown on TikTok, like a TikTok spe specific episode where we each save like six videos in a row from our TikTok for you page, uh -huh. so that we could compare what we're seeing when we score scroll through. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm frozen, right? Or I'm gone? You are frozen. Please okay, well, don't be gone because I'm not, we're getting I'm not, towards I'm not the go. end, people. Yeah, I don't need to leave and come um, back. I'll okay. just let you do everything. I can't touch anything, so you round it up. Play wow. music, baby, round up all this stuff. I trust this, you. This Wednesday, if you're a part of our Patreon, you get our fattest asses episode on our weekly mixer. <laughs> 
And you get early access to our And Just Like That episode, Some of My Best Friends, which again, I'm questioning who hates this woman? Who hates Lisa Todd Wexley? Because they give her the ugliest freaking outfits I've ever seen. Oh, All right. She's beautiful. Poor thing. And she is the, she is she's stunning. like one of the most beautiful people I've ever seen in my life. I think they're trying to make her look like they're, they're sabotaging her because they're jealous of her. Or they want her to look like not prettier than everyone else. I don't know what's going on there, but please subscribe on all the podcast places like, and subscribe on here. All of that. Um, we have our 420 special this Saturday. If you're on our Patreon, you can uh, watch and enjoy that. It's at 420 on 420. Uh, check out our ASMR unhinged. Remember if you're not watching it, you're not do, uh, getting the full story. And um, if you want to, again, if you want to see Amanda, stop being polite and start getting real. Wow. Oh, Jump on there, now. baby. On. Here we are. Uh, and this is how we're going to say goodbye. <laughs> I'm loving this angle. I'm living for this angle, darling. All right, friends. Um, I guess we're good. Please, yeah, if you're still on here and haven't liked or subscribed, do it, babes. Yeah, play the music. And put up a little card. Play the music, bitch. Damn, bitch. I guess I'm I guess I'm being told oops, being told what to do. Anyway. Bye. Bye-bye, Walter.